Okay, let's talk about configuring an RODC or a read-only domain controller. Now, before we do that, let's talk about where you would use an RODC. Uh, so a read-only domain controller is a domain controller that won't allow you to write changes to it. So where we will typically employ a read-only domain controller is if we want a domain controller in a remote site to be used for authentication, but we're worried about security. So I've got my main office where my main domain controllers are, and then I have a remote site. I'll put an RODC down there. That way, it can authenticate users in that remote site without them having to send their authentication requests back up to my main site. So that's going to save me bandwidth. Um, but the other thing is if I'm worried about security down there, I don't have a full IT staff down there, they're my main site. What I'll do is by using an RODC down there, a read-only domain controller, it uh, makes it so that if that read-only domain controller or RODC gets compromised, no changes can be uploaded back to our main servers. Okay, that's the idea of an RODC. So let's talk about how we would configure one. Now I've got a server set up here, and uh, I've already installed uh, the Active Directory domain services on it. And so you'll see we have our little notification over here saying we're ready for post-deployment configuration. So we're going to promote this server to a domain controller. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to add it as an ex a, a domain controller for an existing domain. And then I'm going to use my existing domain, Dalton.local. And then I'm going to set my credentials because I'm not actually part of that domain at the moment. So I'm going to have to use my administrator account. And this can be any administrator or any administrator, not administration, any administrator. Uh, any administrator account that has the rights to uh, promote domain controllers and add computers to the domain. So let me put in my password here real quick. Now, we would do the same thing if we were doing a regular, let me put my rights backslash in there. So we do the same process if we were going to promote a regular domain controller as well. There we go. That looks better. Um, the difference is going to come on this next screen. So if I'm doing a regular domain controller, I can do it. Uh, I can have DNS active. I can make it a global catalog server. But if I want a read-only domain controller, then I'm going to check this option right here. And notice that changes this from DNS options to RODC options. Now, typically, this is going to go in a new site. So very rarely would I put a read-only domain controller in a site where I already have a uh, full read-write domain controllers. So normally what I would do, and I haven't created any of the sites yet, but normally what I would do is I would choose down here which site I was going to put it into. Now the alternative is to go ahead and put it into my primary site and then move it later on. So the directory services restore mode password is going to be, it's used for the same purpose as any other directory services restore mode password when we promote any other computer to a domain controller. Where my variance is going to come in is here. So I have a handful of options here that are unique to RODCs, or read-only domain controllers. And the first one here is, what is my delegated administrator access, uh, account? So I'm going to choose one. I had to think for a minute about which uh, accounts I might have available. There we go. I've got Danny Kincannon as an account. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now, this administrator account, this does not make this account a domain administrator. And that's a big thing here. What it does is it makes this an administrator on this local domain controller only. So what you would do is... Again, remember, think scenario. I'm putting this in a remote site, so I might choose somebody down there and say, all right, I'm going to make you a delegated administrator. Now, that doesn't give you admin access to the entire domain. What it does do is it gives you the option to log into the computer, to install drivers, basically to maintain the computer. A standard user can't do that on a domain controller or a server in general. So by making a... Um, delegated administrator account, then there's somebody on site that can administer that computer, even though they don't get to administer the domain as a whole. Now, the second thing here, accounts that are allowed to replicate passwords to the RODC. 
This is a default option allowed our ODC password replication group. What this does is by default, no passwords are allowed to replicate down to that ROTC. Now that actually doesn't work because we want to use that ROTC to handle authentication on site, right? So what we need to do is we need to allow those passwords to replicate down there. And so we will take and we will create a group and anybody we add to that group, and this is the default option, is allowed ROTC password replication group. Any um, any users who are part of this group, they can have their passwords replicated to uh, this remote RODC. So what we would do is we would take all of our users in that remote site and we would put that them in this group. Now, this is default. So let's say I have multiple sites and I have different groups in each site. Well, what are different groups for each site. Well, what I can do is I can come over here and I can create different security groups for each site. And then I can just put people in that site to, that are allowed to replicate to that RODC. Now, this is trumped by this right here. These are accounts that are denied from re uh, replicating passwords. So by default, administrators, server operators, and backup operators cannot have their passwords replicated down to this RODC. And that's a security feature because if this RODC gets compromised, we don't want those passwords stored there because they have too much access. That's why we have this delegated administrator account. So other than that, most of the rest of this is going to be the same as we would for any other domain controller. So we'll click next and how do we want to replicate? Do we want to install from media? Do we want to replicate from any domain controller? And this we would do with any other DC that we're promoting, right? So I can choose to replicate from a specific domain controller. If I have one in that site already, I could replicate from there. Um, or I could just choose any domain controller that's available, or I can export my domain information, put it on media, and then do install from media. Now, in this case, I'm going to replicate from anything because we don't have that much, so it's going to be fairly straightforward to do. Paths is where I'm going to store the data. We've talked about this with other uh, ADDS promotions, so we won't go into that again. Um, review our options. We run our prerequisites check. And as soon as this gets done, let's go ahead and do our installation. Now, this is going to go ahead and promote for us. It'll re replicate all of the information. It just dropped our connection because we're rebooting. That's normal. We're good with that. Um, it'll actually do the reboot here in a minute. So at this point, this is going to take just a couple of minutes until it comes back up as an RODC. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and then we will pick this up again in a couple of minutes. Okay, so our server is rebooting, and let me go back to that server. So we're waiting for the group policy client, and it's going to come up, and it just does the regular install, uh, install promote, and uh, migrate all of the Active Directory objects. Now, be aware that that can take some time depending on how big your uh, Active Directory database is. Mine is fairly straightforward, so it just took a few seconds. But if you've got thousands of objects inside your Active Directory, it may take a while for that to happen. That's OK. Just plan on And if you're doing this over a wide area network connection, anticipate that it is going to take a while. That's where the install from media thing comes into play. So I want to go look at my primary domain controller here. So let me pull up my other one right here. And I'm going to go to my tools and Active Directory users and computers. Now this is my primary domain controller. And here under uh, Active Directory and Domain Controllers, you'll see I have my primary one, which is a global catalog. And then I've got this one right here. Notice this is identified as a read-only domain controller and a global catalog server. So if I right-click on my read-only domain controller and go to Properties, most of this is pretty straightforward, but what I want to show you is this right here, the password replication policy. So this is all of my um, groups 
that are allowed to or denied from replicating passwords. So you'll notice right now I only have one that's actually allowed and that's the allowed RODC password replication group. If I want to later on do a more specific group, let's say I'm going to move this down to Los Angeles and I want to create a Los Angeles users group that's allowed to replicate then I can come in here and I can add my Los Angeles users group to allow passwords to replicate to this RODC. If there's another one that I want to specifically block I do the same thing I just add it to deny. So here is where I will manage who's allowed to replicate to this RODC and who's not. And if I have multiple RODCs, each one of them is going to have their own list and I will manage each one of them separately. Okay, so that is how we set up a read-only uh, domain controller using Windows Server.